Hi friends, um, in today's tutorial we will create a simple ping pong game um, very similar to the ping pong um, game you probably played on your phones or um, on your um, older um, uh, video games um, the big difference being that we will program this game in Scratch um, Scratch 3 to be precise we will then add capability to the Scratch 3 game so that we can not just play it with our keyboard but we can also play it with the micro bit so we'll use micro bit the bbc micro bit and the, and the and the functionality of the bbc micro bit board to play that game um, if you're looking for a micro bit um, we would highly recommend that you head over to the micro bit page um, we've got um, a whole heap of micro bit products and the website if you're looking for a simple micro bit um, you'll find the micro bit on the um, on the website um, the micro bit is a small but really powerful board by BBC um, and um, you can program it using JavaScript using block based programming or even using Python so real a small but really powerful board um, and lots of free tutorials available um, if you're looking for free tutorials head over to kids can code um, kids can code.com um, is a site that we built that has got uh, uh, tutorials and development tracks covering a heap covering many many different subjects so if you head over to kidscancode.com um, and click on let's get coding that will take you to learning.kidscancode um, and you'll find courses covering scratch bbc microbit robotics electronics python minecraft um, 3d modeling um, just for example if you're looking at for courses, uh, tutorials and courses on uh, robotics, uh, you'll just find there are heaps of robotics courses. Click on any one of them um, and, and you'll find uh, tutorials over there. So let's head back um, and uh, let's kick off our tutorial. So we'll go to scratch.mit.edu. Um, let's head over to scratch.mit.edu and let's create a project there. So our project is called, we'll call it ping pong, ping pong with the BBC micro bit. Okay. We we'll delete this sprite. Um, what we first want to do is we want to add a backdrop, um, and we want to we want to have a ping, uh, we want to have a backdrop that we can use with the ping pong game. So we'll import a backdrop, and I'll make this available on the tutorial page as well. Um, so we'll upload a back, backdrop. I've got a backdrop over here, and there you go. That's the backdrop. Okay. Um, we want a sprite, um, and um, the sprite that we want to add is a ball, obviously. So we'll select a nice little ball, and that'll be a little ball that we'll use with, with the um, 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 our, in our game. Um, we want to program the ball to move around on the screen um, the, there will also be a paddle obviously the paddle will be controlled um, initially by the mouse um, the movement of the mouse we can also add a functionality to move the paddle with the keyboard but eventually we'll use the micro bit to control the movements of the paddle so let's start off by programming the uh, the ball sprite so let's head over. Um, we say when start or when the green flag is clicked, we want to go to we want to go to twenty one fifty. Um, we want to point in direction forty five. And we want a forever loop. We want a forever loop. In the forever loop, we want to move. We want to move 10 steps. And if on edge, we want to bounce. All right? That's what we want to do. So let's test this out. There you go. Okay. Um, 
that's right so we're going to move 10 steps whatever bounce okay cool um now we will go back um, we will add when clicked let's add a forever loop and let's say if let's add touching color red So you want to pick the color let's pick a color so what I've done is I chose the big color and I picked a color on screen I said if color red then I want to play some music play sound boing and we want to set score we want to declare a score variable so let's declare a score variable um, Create a variable, make a variable, let's call the variable score. So when we want to set score to zero, so when the game starts, we want to set score to zero. Um, what we want to do is every time it touches, every time the ball touches red we want to deduct a point so we'll say change variable by minus one so what that will do is every time the ball touches the bottom of the uh, background the red color on the background it will play music um, scratch will play some music and it will deduct a point okay so that's what we want. And we, obviously, we only want score to show up because score is a variable that we've just created. Um, so we've what we've done so far is we've defined a variable. We've set it to zero. That's and we call it score. Um, we have created a block such that if, if the if the ball is touching um, the color red, it plays it plays a sound and you lose a point. Um, and we've created a block to move the um, ball around the screen. Um, okay, now we've got to add one more block and we'll say when, let's get a forever loop, okay, um, we want a condition, we want a condition added in there and we are saying if it touches so okay so we want to so before we do before we add anything else let's first create a paddle so we will create another sprite um, let's just add let's just add a sprite we'll just create a sprite Okay, and we'll draw a sprite on the screen. Okay, and that's what we'll do with the sprite. Okay, so we'll go back. We've drawn a sprite, and that sprite's called sprite one. That's what we've called it. We can change the name, and we can call the sprite uh, ping pong bat. So we go back to our ball sprite and we say if touching ping pong bat then change variable by one which is we want to increase our score by one um, we're going to play some music Let's play some. Oh, yeah, let's let's play some music. Um, we will.
icon 180 degrees just to deflect the ball and we'll give it a small little delay okay so we've added keep we've added functionality such that every time you touch the bat um, you get a positive you, your, your score increases by one it plays a plays some music and then it turns the ball turns around and moves in another direction um, and it keeps that keeps doing that um, in a never-ending loop um, so what we've got to do now is we've got to add one last piece of functionality um, and that last piece of functionality basically is around giving the ping pong bat the ability to move around on screen so what we will do is we will say when when left arrow is clicked you want to move minus 20 we duplicate that and when right arrow is clicked we want to move plus 20 so let's test, test this out okay that's fine um, okay cool um, and we will what we will also do is we can let's costumes and let's sound which is okay okay so you wanted to see but the size of the direction is fine um okay so that's fine um, okay cool so now let's go and test out our game there we go so we're using the keyboard we've added functionality to allow us to use the keys the left and right keys on the keyboard to move the ping pong bat um, and every time the, the ball hits the bat oh there we go we missed it um, and there you see every time it hits the bat we gain a point and every time it, we, it touches the bottom we, oh we don't seem to be losing a point so there's something wrong over there okay we've got this something wrong over there okay okay so i figured out why we are not losing points the reason is we not set this to the right variable so let's talk about again okay there you go now it's okay that's fine so we should now there you go one we every time the ball hits the bat our score increases by one and every time we miss it there you go we lose a point and that's fine so this is a simple game um We've created a really simple game, a ping pong game. Um, and now what we'll do is we'll take the scratch game and we'll add functionality on it so that we can play the same game using the BBC Microbit. Okay, and we make it a little bit more interactive. Um, so let's do that. Let's stop this now. Um, to be able to add, to be able to work with the BBC Microbit, if you remember, if you've seen our previous tutorials, what we first have to do is we need to add the extension. So we'll make sure we plug the BBC Microbit first. We'll plug our BBC Microbit in, okay, which I've just done. Um, we will add the BBC Microbit connector. And it says, make sure that you've got Scratch Link installed and running. Okay, we, we definitely have installed Scratch Link, but we don't have Scratch Link running. So if, you, if this is new to you, and if, um, if this doesn't make sense, please go back and look at our first tutorial. Um, which covers off um, um, setting up the BBC Microbit for use with Scratch 
um, when you once you look once you read through that tutorial you'll work out how to use um, your BBC microbit and, and configure it so that it will show up in scratch so we click on scratch link we start scratch link there you go and that's it and then I will close this and I will say okay add the BBC microbit module and let's see what happens there you go okay so we've connected and we'll connect to the BBC microbit fantastic so that's it now what we want to do is we want to add a few blocks that allow us to to use the keys on the BBC microbit um, to control the panel right so we'll say when so let's basically say when button A is pressed and when let's duplicate that now when button B is pressed so what we've done is we've created we've added two additional blocks um, initially in scratch 3 we had the left arrow moving it moving the back towards the left and we had the right arrow key on the keyboard moving the uh, ping pong back towards the right we've similarly added two controls for the BBC microbit such that when you press the button A it moves towards the left and when you press button B it moves towards the right um, we can also start off by displaying some introductory text so what we can do is we'll say let's say when at start display hi let's do that and uh, what we can also do after that is give it we'll give it a time delay we'll add a small little time delay we'll say wait for two seconds and then display There you go. Okay. So let's test this out. Um, stop. And we will maximize our screen. Let's maximize the screen. I'll initially test it out just by using the, um, sorry, I'll initially test this out just by using the, um, the keyboard. Um, and after that, I'll test it out using the functionality on the BBC micro with the buttons on the BBC micro -bit. so let's test this game out there we go so I'm using the keyboard and you can see the left and right keys are moving the book I'm moving the bat on the screen um, and you will see depending upon which one the, which key I'm pressing you will see these lighting up is the keypad being used the keyboard being used basically to control the movements of the ping pong bat now I'll try using the micro bit there we go whoops there you go and you'll actually see whoops whoops Oops. So the keys on the microbit are a little bit too slow. I might have to tweak the program a bit. Um, 
So what I've just done is I have increased the number of steps that the ping pong bat will move every time you press each of these buttons of the micro bit. Um, on the keyboard, it was uh, minus 20 on the left when you press the left arrow key and uh, plus 20 on the right hand side when you press the right arrow key. For the micro bit, I've changed that to minus 40 on the left every time A is pressed and 40 on the right every time um, the right key, the uh, button B is pressed. Um, in this particular game, we've just used the buttons, the uh, button A and button B of the micro bit to simulate the keypad or the, the movements, the keystrokes. Um, in our next tutorial, we will do the same. Um, we, we will create the same functionality, but we will use the um, accelerometer um, uh, sensor or the sensors on the micro bit that detect uh, movement towards the left or the right. Um, so, so let's test this game out right now and see how it works uh, with these uh, updated values for button A and button B. Stop. We start again. There you go. It's a little bit smoother now. You gotta anticipate the movement of the ball. Whoops, there we go. Oh. There we go. Oops. There we go. So that's it. So what we managed to do in today's game is we managed to create a really simple game. Um, our usual ping pong the ping pong game um, uh, using the using scratch 3 um, we've added a whole bunch of uh, commands um, uh, command blocks to allow us to play the ping pong game using the keyboard um, we programmed the uh, ping pong bat to to be more we, we programmed scratch so that the ping pong bat can be moved around using the left arrow and the right arrow key um, and then we added functionality so that we can play the same game um, using the BBC microbit. So um, instead of using the, the, the buttons on the keyboard, we can use the microbit as a controller and move the uh, ping pong back towards the left or the right. Um, in our next tutorial, we will look at, we will explore similar functionality, but uh, what we will attempt to do in, in the, with the same game is use the sensors on the microbit to detect movement towards the left or the right um, and depending on which side the micro bit board is tilted, um, we will move the ping pong bat towards uh, that particular side. Um, hopefully you've enjoyed this tutorial. Um, um, I will make sure that the uh, uh, tutorial page has a link to the backdrop so you can download it. Um, this used to be available, the tutorial used to be available with Scratch 2. Um, but it's not the case with Scratch 3, so I'll make sure you have the backdrop available in case you want to try out the tutorial. Um, and for any additional tutorials on the subject, um, on Scratch or Microbit, we would recommend you head over to uh, Kids Can Code. Kids Can Code is the site that we use very extensively with our kids in class, um, and it's got uh, tutorials covering different subjects. Um, Scratch, BBC Microbit, Robotics, Electronics, Python, Minecraft, um, so on and so forth. Um, happy hacking and, um, and speak to you guys soon. Thanks.